Hi there, I'm Charlie from the Montgomery Development Education Centre. I've maybe been into your school, spoken to your teachers. Um, I thought today it's a nice blustery day, so I'd take you on a little tour of my garden and then we'll read a, a story together. Um, so, I'm not much of a gardener, but there are things here that I've grown before and I'm hoping they're going to be okay. So this here, uh, these, are, these are my potato plants. Matatis, and I'm hoping that eventually they'll flower white, white little white flowers, and then I'll dig them up and I'll have potatoes. Uh, these ones here are going to grow hopefully nice and tall, and I've got some uh, got some runner beans and some broad beans, so we're going to eat those at some point. And of course, my strawberries. Except usually, if they do ripen in Scotland, the birds get them. But we'll see if we can get some for ourselves. So uh, that's that's some of the things I'm growing. Uh, I've got some onions down there, uh, and some oh, there's chives and spring onions and oh, lots of things. I've got some spinach over in that tub. Uh, what else have I got? What have I got here? I've got oh, lovely. I've got cauliflower growing here. And that'll be pretty nice and parsley. Oh, loads of loads of lovely fine stuff. In fact, over here, uh, this is my little olive tree. Olive trees usually grow in kind of hot, sunny places like uh, kind of Israel and Palestine. And uh, Palestine's famous for its its olives. Um, I don't think I'll get any olives here, but it's a nice it's a nice tree, nevertheless. Oh, and in the background, I'll introduce you to Billy. So, uh, where's Billy? Right, Billy, I, I'm not very, I don't really like keeping animals as pets um, and don't and think that if you are going to keep an animal as a pet, like Billy in this cage, I kind of thought Billy deserved a bigger cage. So, uh, Billy's now got a little tunnel there and if you look behind here, Billy, hey Billy, there's Billy the rabbit. Uh, just happy enough, likes to eat, and has a bit more space to run around now, which is good. Anyway, I thought today we'd maybe sit outside and we'd read a book called The World Came to My Place Today. So this is my little bench when I want a bit of peace and quiet and uh, everything inside is going a bit hectic. This is, this is where I escaped to. And it's quite nice, because I can keep an eye on my garden as well, and all the things that I'm, I'm growing. But the thing is, it doesn't matter how much you can grow in your garden, and all these potatoes that I'm going to eat, and spring onions, and onions, and cauliflower, and spinach, and everything like that, we still rely all on, on countries all over the world to bring us the food that we need, and the other things that we need. Just because of climate, because uh, food is, is, is uh, better grown in other places. And just sometimes because actually we really like stuff. I love bananas. But you can't get bananas in Scotland, can you? So you buy your fair trade bananas from places that do sell bananas, uh, that do produce bananas. Like you know, South American countries, uh, countries in Africa, things like that. Anyway. Somebody else who uh, discovered all the fantastic things that we we get from all around the world is the boy in this book. The world came to my place today. So George is about to, to find out. Can you see it if I do this? Look at that. Here's the map of the world. All the different places where things come from a cup of tea, I had a cup of tea this morning oh, orange chocolate, orange juice I wonder how many of these things could be fair trade do you buy fair trade? do you know which supermarkets to go to to get fair trade? might be worth having a, a wee look so this book is to Jake and Charlie and all other children everywhere enjoy your food and travel the world with it look after the plants that look after you, for Daisy and Martha. The world came to my place today, by Joe Redman, 
illustrated by Leigh Honor Roberts. Flora's got spots all over, and that means George can't go out today. Never mind, said Grandpa. Look, I've brought the world to your place instead. Oh, we all know what it's like to not be able to go out, don't we? So just because poor Flora can't go out because she's not well, poor George has to stay inside as well. Well, it's all right, because Grandpa's going to take the world to George. Oh, I wish they could, the world really could come to visit me, Grandpa, sighed George. It already has, said Grandpa. The rice in your cereal came from China, and the oranges in your juice grew in sunny Spain. Orange juice is squeezed out of oranges. You knew that, didn't you? Oranges grow in trees in warm, sunny places like Spain and California, all the way in America. This breakfast cereal is made from puffed rice grains. Rice plants grow in warm, wet places. I think Scotland would be classed as a cold, wet place. Grrr, woof, 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 barked Buster as the postman delivered the letters. Careful, Buster, warned Grandpa. This paper was made from trees in Canada. And even the doormat is made from coconuts in India. Really? said George. Doesn't look very tasty. Paper's made from mushed up wood, spruce and pine trees for wood and paper and they grow in cool places like Canada and Scandinavia. Do you know which countries are in Scandinavia? Doormats are made from the hairy coats of coconuts and coconuts grow on coconut palm trees in hot wet places like India. I'm off around the world on my bike now, said George. Why not visit Malaysia, laughed Grandpa, to find the rubber trees that made your tyres. But it might be quicker to go down the garden and dig up a potato. That's what your crisps are made from. It says here, rubber is a white liquid that comes from rubber trees when the bark is cut. Rubber trees grow near hot, wet rainforests in Southeast Asia. Crisps are fried thin slices of potato. Potatoes grow in gardens and farms all over the world, just like my one. Maybe I'll make some crisps when my potatoes are ready. At lunchtime, they all had pizza. I don't like olives, said George. Buster does, said Grandpa. Maybe he knows they've travelled all the way from Greece. Ooh. That's another place, not just Palestine, but Greece as well. But the rest of the pizza is made out of wheat from America. So see here, pizza bases, like bread, are baked from flour, which is ground up grains of wheat. Did you know that? Wheat is grown on farms in places that are not too hot and have plenty of rain, like Europe and North America. And well, whilst you've been out in the countryside, you've probably seen fields full of this stuff. Olives grow on olive trees. They're soaked in salty water before you eat them. Olive trees grow in warm sunny places like Greece, Italy and Spain. I'll let you into a secret. I don't like olives very much. And if you ever pick an olive of an olive tree, I don't think they're very nice until you've soaked them in salt water. And then my, my, my wife eats all of them because I don't like them. Anyway, that's olives. Ding dong! Delivery from the supermarket. <laughs> the world really had come to George's place today. Are you going to help unpack, George? Said Grandpa. George started by checking that the chocolate tasted okay. Very important job. Bananas grow in places like Jamaica and the West Indies. Cornflakes made from maize grown in the United States. Baked beans, made from haricot beans, grown in the United States as well. Washing up liquids scented with lemons from California. Although my dad grew a lemon in his greenhouse. Coffee ground f uh, from coffee beans, grown in Brazil. Sunflower oil, made from, made from sunflower seeds in Russia. 
and soap made with oil from palms grown in Asia. And I forgot to tell you, I've got sunflowers growing here as well. I wonder how tall they will get. Have you grown sunflowers? You can stick them in a pot, put them on the windowsill, see how tall they get. Look what I've made, Grandpa, cried George. I'm going to sail the high seas in search of chocolates. Can I come too, asked Grandpa. We should go to West Africa first. That's where we'll find the cocoa beans growing. Chocolate is made from ground up cocoa beans. The beans are found in the pods of cocoa trees that grow in West Africa. See if you can find out where cocoa beans were first grown and first used and what they were first used for because it wasn't chocolate straight away. <sighs> Poor Grandpa was getting tired. Swing me higher, begged Flora. Lucky this rope is strong, he puffed. It was made in Africa. My train is off to find some more toys, said George. I'll have to go to Poland then, said Grandpa, where the wood came from. This rope comes from Tanzania, in Africa. It's made from the leaf fibres of the sisal plant. Wooden toys are often carved from the wood of beech trees. Beech trees grow in northern Europe. Mum's home! shouted George, and she's brought us some sweets. <gasps> Lucky George. Sugar from Brazil, said Grandpa, and licorice from France. Now, where can I get a nice cup of tea, said Mum. <laughs> How about Sri Lanka, laughed Grandpa. Sugar is squeezed out of the stems of sugar cane, or the roots of sugar beet. Sugar cane plants grow in tropical countries like Brazil. Tea leaves grow on bushes in warm, damp places such as India, China and Sri Lanka. The green leaves are fermented and dried before they are put into tea bags. And then I drink them. At supper time, Grandpa needed a rest. Not surprised. Even though Grandpa's asleep, whispered George, the world hasn't stopped coming to our place, has it, Mum? Oh no, said Mum. Look at the tomatoes in your soup. They came from Italy. Tomato soup is made from cooked, mashed up tomatoes. Tomato plants grow in warm places all over the world. But they're another thing that lots of people in Scotland grow in their greenhouses. Lovely big fat red ripe tomatoes. George took his globe into the bathroom. Time to brush your teeth now, said Mum. Smell the mint in the toothpaste. You can grow mint in the garden, you know. Now I thought I'd grown mint in the garden, but it turned out to be my spinach, because I didn't know until the seeds came through and I forgot to label it. I've got mint somewhere. Goodness knows where it is though. But George was busy showing Flora his ship, carrying spices across the bubbly Indian Ocean. Did you know that towels are made from cotton? Cotton plants grow in hot, dry places such as the southern states of America and parts of China and India. The minty flavour in toothpaste comes from peppermint oil, which is squeezed from the leaves of peppermint. Peppermint grows from all, uh, sorry, peppermint grows all over Europe and the United States. I liked it when the world came to my place, said George sleepily. Will it come again tomorrow? Mum kissed him goodnight. Of course it will, she said. The world comes to your place every day. And there it is. It really does. And again, there's the map of the world there. Isn't that interesting? And how did these things even get to our shops? All these things that are coming from different countries. And who makes them? And who grows them? Next time you're in the supermarket, have a look for fair trade things. Have a look on the fair trade website. And make sure that the things that you buy that come from countries all around the world are grown properly, fairly, of good quality. And that the people that made them are paid and treated fairly. There's one more thing I was going to show you actually. Just take this. What happens 
with all our waste when we've eaten this stuff and we've thrown it away. Well, I've got some some uh, some things for you to meet. These are my chums. I don't know if you can see in there, but that's where I put my food waste. And along with this mat that's made of coconut fibres, and that stops any bugs and beasties getting in. But if I grab this fella, these are my worms. Hello worm. It doesn't like being held, so I'm going to pop the worm back in. And I'll go back and put the lid on that later on. Anyway, thanks for um, listening to my story. And uh, it was lovely to read it to you. And um, if your teachers are interested in more books like that, or to come and do some work on global citizenship and bring it into the classroom, then just uh, let us know at the Montgomery Development Education Centre and uh, just give us a ring and we can do something for you. Lovely to see you. Bye-bye.